Hello and welcome to Faith on Film, a program designed to keep you aware and informed in everything that's happening in the world of faith and family entertainment. Um, today I've got a, a guest that uh, actually has been in several films with this one company, uh, Collective Development. And uh, a few weeks ago I had, actually probably about two or three months ago, I had Melissa Anschutz, maybe you'll remember her, uh, and she was talking about this one specific movie that literally launched, uh, it, it released I think a couple of months ago. Uh, and so um, today I have uh, one of the other stars from that movie. Now what's interesting is this gentleman, I've never met in person before, but I'm pretty aware of him. And one thing that did, I did read up on him was that he was actually headed into law enforcement. So it'll be interesting to find out how he moved from law enforcement to acting and producing and writing. In fact, let me, let me share a little bit uh, about him with you. Shane Hagedorn is uh, an award-winning producer, writer, and actor. As a writer-director, he has produced two features. In 2008, Shane premiered his first, The Model Father, a film he wrote, directed, produced, and edited. Then in 2009, Shane premiered a documentary called Craftsman Style. Both films uh, have played to several sold-out screenings. Now, Ashes of Eden was Shane's breakout film. He was, again, a uh, writer, director, producer, and editor. Ashes of Eden was produced in association with Collective Development Incorporated and Aptic, and I hope I said that right, Aptic Films uh, and Digital. Uh, Shane resides in Michigan, which I'm assuming is pretty cold right, right about now, with his wife on a small farm where he operates uh, his production company, New House Entertainment. Shane, welcome to Faith on Film. Hey, thank you for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. You bet. I, I've been wanting to have you actually for a while, but you know, it's it just things things keep getting busier and busier over here. And uh, finally, I said, you yeah. know what, I got to have him on, uh, especially since I did have Melissa on. Um, so here you are. Now we we want to find out about that film, uh, but I'm very interested to find out what your journey really is and how. Uh, tell us a little bit about this whole. Uh, law enforcement. Were you going to be a cop, or what were what was happening there, and why did you switch over to film? Yeah, it was. Uh, I was probably about nineteen, I think, and it was my first real job. Was uh, playing close security mm -hmm. at a department store where you kind of watch cameras, bus ca bus shoplifters, and stuff like that. And um, had about a year plus into that, moved up to. Uh, lead detective, ended up becoming manager, and uh, had about four or five years in retail mm -hmm. uh, loss prevention. And I thought just naturally, you know, I worked with so closely with law enforcement right. that I thought I'd gravitate towards that. I was a, kind of a protector, you know, I was. Uh, and so anyway, while taking uh, some criminal justice classes, I had an elective, and I know some of my friends took like these weird electives like ping pong and different things like that. And I saw this intro to acting, and it was acting was something I always wanted to, to do as well. If you look at all the little pictures that I drew when I was a kid, it was like a cop and, and yeah. acting, you know, and watching all the movies and just mesmerized. And uh, so I, I was like, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this. And I took this intro to acting class. And, and now I had, uh, you know, people coming up to me and even a mentor of mine who, who taught that class said, you know, you're going to become a cop. I just, I don't see that. You know, you're, you're an actor. And uh, it took a lot of reflection and, and uh, asked my girlfriend, then my wife now, you know, that's something that I always wanted to, to do. And when I, when I commit to something, I, I embrace it and I, I go full hearted. So I changed my um, major, majored in theater and started getting lead roles in a lot of the plays. And and then I got to a point where, uh, you know, they just don't have roles for you in theater. And I was in a small town here in Michigan. I didn't know anything about movies. And, and one time, uh, uh, one of my the students that I was going to school with, she came back and she had done a short film. I was like, you're in a movie? What, what is this? And I was so curious about it. And then I learned that there's filmmakers in my town and I started networking with them and mm -hmm. I go, I, I'm going to make a movie. And I wrote my first feature. It was a 60s period film. I had the cars, locations, everything. I took one film class and that was just to borrow the lights and the boom and stuff like that. I bought a camera and uh, we just started, started my first feature film, you know, 
my 20s, so that was over about 20 years ago. Wow. Now. So yeah. do you think that maybe uh, you kind of had an inkling or a desire to get in filmmaking like from when, from when you were a kid? Or was it something that literally well, happened after you, you know, had thought about going into uh, law enforcement? I'm wired for it. I was created mm -hmm. for this, but I had to discover yes. it. And right. so that act, intro to acting class was the spark. I was always okay. so curious and wanting to know. I just didn't know I could do it here. Yes. And I didn't want to move to L.A. I didn't want to move to New York. A lot of my friends are out there and they're doing great. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to stay here. And as I learned, I have more resources here. And I ended up, you know, years later, uh, meeting with DJ Perry and Collective Development. Mm -hmm. And we started making some real, started getting really serious. And by the way, the reason I asked that is because it just seems like a lot of folks that I interview, uh, especially involved in the faith industry, because this is, this is what this show is all about, uh, seems to have had that um, that inkling, that desire, or, or like you said, you were wired for it from way early yeah. on. And even if you didn't get into it until much later, but it seems like it was actually a calling that was placed in your life uh, oh, from, sure. from, from very early on. So uh, yeah. I, I, can, I can see that happening. Uh, I'll tell you what, we're gonna, take a, we're gonna take a break right now. And when we come back, let's talk about some of the films that you've made. Um, I know that you've made, uh, what, I, what I'm familiar with mostly is now the movies that you've made in partnership with uh, DJ Perry at Collective Development. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about some of those uh, and then we'll kind of continue from there and, and see what else we learn about you, all right? All right, thanks. All right, folks, don't go away. We're going to be right back. Encourage TV, family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Meet Will. Will wants to make a movie based in Bible times. No, maybe a Western. Well, maybe an apocalyptic movie. A biblical era apocalyptic Western? That would be so original. But Will needs some sweet sets to bring it to life, and Will is 25,352 miles away from any of those sweet, sweet sets. Or so he thinks. Fortunately for Will, there is a solution. Introducing Capernaum Studios, your ticket to realistic locations and everything else you need to bring your period accurate story to life. Book a tour today, like Will, who is, um, yet to leave. Back to Faith on Film. Uh, I'm here today with uh, Shane Hagedorn, who um, has, you know, a lot of the movies, Shane, that, that you do are a little different than, um, than a lot of the movies that I'm more familiar with and maybe a lot of our viewers are familiar with that are uh, labeled mm. Christian films. And I know I talked to DJ about this, by the way, uh, that you guys are doing films that are a little bit more, um, I don't know if I should call them realistic or they're 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 more uh, they're a little edgier, if you will, than your typical Christian uh, type film. Um, yeah. But at the same time, they do have a somewhat of a, of a biblical worldview, or I would say a, a you know worldview of faith. Um, is this pretty much what you're interested in doing? Uh, I I'm 
I'm just interested in this journey right here mm -hmm. on earth and the people I get to meet and new experiences. And, you know, as an actor, I'll act on another show. Uh, it might not have some of the, you know, foundations of some of the films that I make, but I like to explore and, and meet new people. I mean, yes, I'm a believer. Yes, mm -hmm. uh, some of my films have faith woven into them. But if we're really going to reach an audience that don't right. get to hear certain things, how are you going to get behind those gates? Mm -hmm. Not that I'm launching a Trojan horse or anything anywhere behind gates, but I just want to tell stories that interest me uh, with storytellers that I want to work with that are just as earnest in their efforts. Right. Um, and I leave something behind that is inspiring, that could be challenging and truthful, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's what in interests me, whatever those stories are, whatever genres they they cross. Um, and so, hey amen, God, God puts it all together. It might be in the 12th hour that we get A, B, or C, but it comes together, and I'm happy for it, and, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm content. Well, you know, I mean, I believe we all have our specific, um, I'll call it a calling of, of what to do. Uh, same, yeah. same as in church, for instance, you've got pastors and you've got teachers and, you know, you've got those that are go out evangelizing. I mean, there's different jobs for all of us. Um, yeah. And uh, it's important that we have folks that, uh, that, you know, that have faith, folks that are Christian that are out doing work in the world as, as well, as opposed to just doing um, you know, movies for the church, let's say. And uh, yeah. actually, that's a little tougher. I have done both. Most of my life has been in the Christian space. I, I was a television mm -hmm. director for the largest Christian network uh, in the world, Trinity Broadcasting Network. Uh, but there was one year that I did work out in Hollywood, and I found that I actually seem to have been making an, a bigger impact there than I did uh, within the Christian space because it was, we were all Christians and we just did what we had to do. But when I went out yeah. there, I felt like, whoa, wait a minute, now I have to be an example <clears throat> of what I believe in to, to a right. whole different kind of people. And interestingly enough, it was a live show, a daily live show, and the first time we did the show, I, as we were all on headsets, and I, did, uh, I said, look, you guys, I, I hope this doesn't offend any of you. I'm used to just saying a quick little prayer uh, before I start a live show because it helps to con kind of calm me down and, you know, so uh, from what I hear from somebody that was out there, they all started looking around like, what in the world is this? You know, <laughs> we've <laughs> never experienced this. And I didn't, it yeah. was a short, I mean, I don't think it was but 10 seconds. But yeah. by the end of the week, again, this was a, li a daily live show. By the end of the week, they were reminding me, hey, Isaac, don't forget to pray. I think it sure. helped them as well. So I felt like, you know what, I made an impact without saying, uh, you know, let's all, let me give you a Bible study, but rather just, this is who oh, yeah. I am, and it just made an impact there. So, you know, I appreciate guys like you that you, you've got your thing you do, but at the same time, if you're asked to go join on a set that's, uh, you know, not necessarily a, a faith-oriented set, that you can be there and impact uh, even those folks, uh, you know, doing that particular movie. Oh, yeah. I mean, guy's going to do what he's going to do. Absolutely. Right? And so even a pebble just thrown in the pond affects the whole pond with yeah. just that little splash and the ripple. So, you know, sometimes we're called to, to right. plant the seed, to water the seed, or sometimes you're at, you're able to harvest that thing. And and like I said, you know, it, it just as an artist, I'm really grateful to be born at this time <clears throat> and everything that's happening. Uh, it's a very unique time. And uh, I'm with a, a, a band, a tribe of people that uh, are interested in and like-minded and telling some some thought-provoking stories mm -hmm. and humorous challenging you know uh we have a couple out that 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 explore that and we're really excited about them right now what about this movie that this is the latest movie that i'm aware of uh that you were a part of and uh, uh of course with, with melissa and, and i know she's in a lot of the movies with uh, uh you know the dj perry does uh, yeah. but this particular one uh why, uh, what was your role on it, first of all? Um, well, I acted and uh, co-produced it. Mm -hmm. And so I play Sterling, which is the boyfriend of, of uh, one of the main characters. Right. Um, yeah, Melissa was fantastic yes, in this she film. Was. She was also co-producer and lead in it. 
Uh, we all tend to be in our own projects because mm -hmm. why not? We're actor producers. And I think that's very strong as an actor. I'm not waiting for the opportunities. I'm creating the opportunities. And as a producer, you have skin in the game. Mm -hmm. So you want these projects from concept to delivery to be the absolute best. And so I think that we are, are all, uh, unified in delivering that excellence you know right. and you know from all of our films you can look them all up the biblical trilogy 40 nights chasing the star yes um, christ slayer ashes of eden you know lost heart the movie that just came lost out heart. that's available um and we just made one during this pandemic at the very tail end of it uh carefully navigating some things and that's called best years gone and i directed that and co-produced mm. it and acted in it and starring DJ Perry. Uh, you know, I, I love watching you guys work together. You seem to be in a lot of films together. Um, yeah. And I've always enjoyed uh, you guys' films. Let's take another break, and then when we come back, uh, we'll just find out a little bit about maybe what's in your future, what plans you might have. I'm sure you're not done uh, making films, so maybe you've got some stuff there working out that, uh, that we'd like to hear about, all right? Yeah. yeah. All righty, folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Got a postcard from the grandkids. They went to the ark. Yeah. What does it say? Well, Annie says they had a blast and that it's really, really big. Everything looks big to a six-year-old. Well, Hudson says it's even bigger than the castle. It can't be that big. Can it? Go ahead. Think bigger. back to Faith on Film. We are here today with Shane Hagedorn, who uh, uh, has been in quite a few movies that I absolutely love, uh, but I'm sure he's not done making movies. So what I want to do on this one, uh, on this segment, uh, Shane, is just let us know what might be there for the future for you. Uh, future is very bright in terms very of bright. the projects that we have on board. Um, Wild Faith, which is one of our films that we um, released a couple years ago, we've been trying to build a TV series out of it called Hastings. Um, we're very near to that goal being mm -hmm. realized, actually producing that TV show next year in 2021. So um, look for that. Also watch Wild Faith, of course. Yes. It's the spur of that. And then uh, we're developing a World War II project as well with Anthony Hornis directing that. So that'll be coming up in the fall 2021. Like I mentioned in the, uh, previous segment best years gone is a it's a dark comedy it's kind of like a tragic comedy mm. um in in the vein of a coen's brothers i look at it as like a coen's brother movie meeting clashing with uh leaving las vegas the deep 
deep despair of, of Nicolas Cage's character. Um, and that stars DJ Perry. We had an incredible time making that, um, very challenging. But we walked away with something really unique and that we all were really proud of. So we just wrapped that like six, seven weeks ago, something like maybe four or five weeks wow. ago. Yeah. Now, do you go theatrical with these films? I know theatrical is a very difficult uh, difficult thing for filmmakers, you know, especially independent filmmakers. I mean, unless you have the 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 big uh, you know humongous mechanism of uh, of a big studio, uh, it, it can be very difficult. Do you guys do them for for theatrical, or are they straight to digital? Yeah, um, <clears throat> excuse me. With the exception of this year, most all those films have had a theatrical run, okay. not a wide national release, mm -hmm. but they've been regional releases, uh, priority or. Um, primarily in Michigan, and we've had them in Ohio and Florida and New York and smaller theaters. Um, it takes just as much of an engine and people to do that um, as it is making the film. So you've got to kind of strategize where to put all your efforts. Um, our partner, Bridgestone Media, Multimedia, has right. been really great with all of our films and getting them the the, the streaming and DVD right. releases, yeah. and we've been doing our theatrical. But um, hopefully, as as things wind out with with COVID nineteen, theaters start opening up, and our reach extends a little bit more. We want to open that up in, mm -hmm. in larger theaters. So we'll see. Yeah. Well, you know that definitely. Uh, COVID has just uh, made a huge impact on on film filmmakers. Yeah. Uh, but uh, at the same time, it's opened up a lot of the streaming opportunities, hasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, people, you know, and and going back to some of that security history, I've worked in healthcare security still for over 21 hmm. years. And so I watch it day to day, healthcare workers yeah. going in and just getting, you know, just tough days. And so I believe what I make helps them when they come home. And they can relax and kick their feet up and watch something and just escape for a while. Hopefully laugh, hopefully feel something and go back and do it again. So I believe what we do is, as craftspeople, as artists, we're giving something back to the world. That's what an artist does. Right. We are, we're given, we're born with that and we give our gift away to the world. Yeah. Um, yeah, interestingly enough, the, the show that I do, of course, as you can tell, is it's a very simple show. It, it's uh, it's done, you know, via uh, Zoom or Skype or FaceTime or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I've been doing it now for almost two years. Um, and I always thought of it as, well, this is just a little, you know, this little show that I originally was just going to put on YouTube. It ended up actually that it's being distributed into about 12 different networks, you know, actual television networks and platforms, uh, but still Fantastic. in this format. And interesting enough, when COVID started, it seemed like almost everybody was doing this kind of show. Everybody's just, you know... Uh, doing the, yeah. their guests are, are at, at their own homes, which is kind of cool because it gives us an opportunity to go to where you're at versus you come into right. this fake set, you know. So um, it's it's been, uh, for, for me, <laughs> I hate to say COVID's been good for me, but it sort of kind of has. And I know that there are um, other uh, other uh, businesses or uh, other entities that have Kind of that this has kind of helped them in some way. Of course, we do not want to diminish at all the fact that people yeah. have you know have died from this, and, and we pray that it that it ends uh, very very soon because uh, um, you know it, it can be devastating. Well, listen, how can people uh, follow you, get a hold of you, uh, you know, write you, or find out what you're doing? Yeah, uh, I'm active social media, you know, mm -hmm. Facebook, and just go to Shane Hagedorn. You can go to cdiproductions.com, look okay. at the library of films we have. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of work, uh, a lot of good works in that in that right. library. They're all available on Amazon streaming, iTunes, things like that. So uh, I encourage you to check it out. Let me know what you think. Watch Wild Faith. Watch Man's Best Friend. Watch, you know, Lost yeah. Heart. And tell me what you think. I think they're really unique films. They're heartfelt films. Excellent. They're funny. And they've got everything, I believe. And uh, we just need you to find them. 
Thanks. And then rate them on IMDb, of course. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> well, listen, man, thank you for taking time to, to join. I, know, I notice you're awfully busy with all those films you're doing, but thank you for taking the time to join me on I'm today's making show. one right now at, at, while we're doing this interview. So, <laughs> Okay. Well, you see, um, <laughs> filmmakers never, uh, never end, right? Well, listen, yeah. thank you. Thank you again. Folks, don't go away. We'll be right back. Encourage TV, family-friendly and faith-friendly content absolutely free. Subscribe today and watch hundreds of hours of content on our streaming channels. Visit EncourageTV.com today. Seriously, Dad, I want to go. I told you, it's not that big. Great Granddaddy couldn't even fit right. That thing's not to scale. It's a cartoon. The real one's bigger than a football field. For real? Come on, you don't even have to pay for me. Kids are free. All right, all right. It can't be that big. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> told you, Dad, you just gotta think bigger. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in to today's show. I find it such a privilege to have this opportunity to come into your homes and bring you stories from people like Shane who have given their commitment to producing films that will impact our culture. Uh, if you want to reach out to him, you can always just write me and I will forward uh, your questions or your comments to him. Uh, simply write me at faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. That's faithonfilmtv at gmail.com. And of course, you can always write me a, a note as well. Just let me know that you're out there watching. And you can always follow me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at faithonfilmtv. That's at faithonfilmtv. And of course, don't forget to check out Parables TV, a place where you can watch a lot of these great movies that we talk about here. Movies, documentaries, reality shows, just all kinds of great content for you and your family. All you have to do is go to parables.tv and register for free. That's parables.tv. Dot TV. Well, until next week, take care.